Seventh grade, illustrative math, unit three, lesson six, estimating areas. Number one, find the area of the polygon. They've provided us with some lengths and we can use those lengths to help us figure out the missing lengths. For example, two centimeters plus two centimeters equals four centimeters. Now that we found all the missing lengths, we can divide this into rectangles. 3 by 4 equals 12 centimeters squared, or 12 square centimeters. 1 by 2 equals 2 centimeters squared, or 2 square centimeters. And 2 by 3 equals 6 centimeters squared, or 6 squared centimeters. Twelve plus two plus six equals twenty. So the area of the entire polygon is twenty square centimeters. Number two, A. Draw polygons on the map that could be used to approximate the area of Virginia. And B. Which measurements would you need to know in order to calculate an approximation of the area of Virginia? Label the sides of the polygons whose measurements you would need. Note, you aren't being asked to calculate anything. Let's draw the polygons on the map for 2A. To answer 2B, we would need the base and the height for each of these polygons. Number 3. Jada's bike wheels have a diameter of 20 inches. How far does she travel if the wheels rotate 37 times? The diameter is 20 inches. How far would this wheel travel if it rotated 37 times? 37 times 20 times pi. That's about 2,325 inches. Number 4. The radius of the Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometers. The equator is the circle around the Earth, dividing it into the northern and southern hemispheres. The center of the Earth is also the center of the equator. What is the length of the equator? Here's the Earth with the equator, the northern and southern hemispheres, with the tilt. Cut the Earth in half, and you can find the center of the Earth. The radius of the center of the Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometers. The diameter, or the equator, would be 6,400 kilometers times 2 times pi. That makes the length of the equator a little more than 40,000 kilometers. Number 5. Here are several recipes for sparkling lemonade. For each recipe, describe how many tablespoons of lemonade mix it takes per cup of sparkling water. This means that we're going to have to multiply or divide the cups of sparkling water to equal just one cup of sparkling water. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. This diagram illustrates 12 cups of sparkling water and this diagram represents four tablespoons of lemonade mix. 12 cups divided by 12 equals one cup. So now we found one cup of sparkling water. Well, we'll also have to divide the tablespoons of lemonade mix by 12. Four divided by 12 is four twelfths, and four twelfths is equivalent to one third. So the ratio would be one third of lemonade mix to one cup of sparkling water. This diagram represents six cups of sparkling water, and this diagram represents four tablespoons of lemonade mix. Six divided by six equals one cup of water, and four divided by six equals four-sixths, or two-thirds, tablespoons of lemonade mix. 
The ratio would be two-thirds tablespoons of lemonade mix to one cup of water. A ratio of three to five. Five divided by five equals one, so we have one cup of sparkling water. And three divided by five equals three-fifths, so we have three-fifths of a tablespoon of lemonade mix. So the ratio would be three-fifths to one, or three-fifths of a tablespoon of lemonade mix to one cup of sparkling water. A ratio of one-half to three-fourths. Three-fourths divided by three-fourths equals one, or one cup of sparkling water. One-half divided by three-fourths equals one-half times four-thirds, which equals four-sixths. Four-sixths is also two-thirds. The ratio would be two-thirds of a tablespoon of lemonade mix to one cup of sparkling water. How can you help? You can subscribe. You can become a patron. You can tell your friends and tell your teachers. But be sure to read the video descriptions and bookmark the Google Doc. It has links to all the lessons. Thanks for watching.